So then I think at first it does even limit their access to education. You know, let's start from there, that their access to education is limited, you know, seriously. But those that, you know, end up actually going to university or to college, you know, do come here coming from a background that is needy and indigent. And sometimes even instances of the domestic or gender-based violence and where you talk to them, they will tell you that they used to walk like five kilometers to school, they have to cross a river, they have to do that. And sometimes they use that even as motivation for them to say, look, I want to be someone in life, maybe even a lawyer, an attorney, a judge, so they can change this environment. So eventually it does become sort of a, a motivation to them. But the situation you know, needs, does need help, you know, because we still have issues of mad schools even after like a lot of court judgments to say please look uh, you know spend resources on these issues i mean try and you know alleviate poverty but you still have that challenge and then it does actually influence even how we you know of course our students then actually behave and how they actually interact with each other, each, each other and how they you know sort of inform their decisions when their adversity you know because that background still follows them one one or the other some of them fall along the way because maybe they don't have enough support systems from home Especially now with COVID, it was even more exacerbated because you are at home, you are five of you in like in one squashed room, and then you have to attend the lecture. So there are a lot of other dynamics then that intervene as a result of you know a needy you know background or you know if I can put it that way. I'm sure Prof can just want to add to to that. Yeah, I think COVID made it exacerbated the problem because a lot of our students reported that they it's easier for them to study while they are at campus mm -hmm. because there's at least the resources are there, Wi-Fi, um, and they have access to some laptops and so forth. So I think when the students are at home, and we sometimes forget that during the holiday times and so forth, they find it extremely difficult to keep up with their studies. Um, and I think the problem is more there in the first year, and we sometimes forget that that is so until one day you meet a student and you have a conversation and you realize just what the student had to overcome just to get to the university and then they have to still adapt to uh, east london is not a big city but it is big in terms of what they are yeah, used true. to so this is this whole new um, idea of adapting and as soon as they do they find it easier to be here which is which is sad because you would think it would be easier for them to study from home but it's not. So we then have to attempt to accommodate them um, so that they can finalize their studies in a, a situation where they actually have access to some matters. But then sometimes you are shocked when you hear that a student hasn't eaten for quite a while yeah. and we try and intervene and do something there, but it's not always possible. Especially a while ago, there was a serious issue when NSFAS had not paid out to the students and our students had literally gone without food. Um, a while ago, I spoke to a student and because of what he had said, I realized that he had nowhere to live, that he was literally living on the street while he was attempting to do his studies. And then you do um, an intervention. Uh, I think those circumstances um, obviously limit their ability to, to study as they can. We currently have also a situation where the students have to walk a few kilometers every day to come to the library in order to have access to Wi-Fi so that they can just attend classes which mm. are which is still online. I mm. think you, you might know about that. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's untenable because I think maybe we, as the university, sometimes even the faculty, we try, but maybe we're not meeting them you know, halfway, especially maybe providing a shuttle, for instance, from southern, some of the residents are a bit far, like what Prof is saying. So imagine it's raining, but you have to come to, to the library, you have to come to campus for you to access proper Wi-Fi because in some accommodation, which is not maybe university accommodation, the, the Wi-Fi is problematic there. So even then, yeah. they are here, but then they still don't have access to education. So I find that very problematic because eventually it, it either demoralizes the student, they fall out on the way, or if they're not strong enough like others or they don't have enough support system, then, well, it's unfortunate for them. And maybe we, we need to teach from a pedagogy of care, even as, I mean, my duty as a literate is just to go to class, ensure that everyone is there and they teach and they deliver what I have to do. But now I think we have to go beyond the call of duty to say, look, I'm not an academic here, I'm not just a lawyer, but I'm here as an inspiration to everyone here in class. So I have to try and ensure that everyone in class is mentally ready, you know, they're physically fine, you know, check on them, just touch base, uh, how are you guys fine, how's the Wi-Fi address, you know, just have those little conversations before or after class to try and touch base with them. 
you know, I, I think just this week and last week, I had two students come to my office say, I don't have funding at all. And, you know, the situation at home is dire. I, I stay with my aunts. And, you know, I, one even went to the HO, my HOD and said, look, I'm going to deregister. After he paid 3.5 for, for that student, he, he wanted to leave because he doesn't have funding. Uh, the laptops are finished sometimes because resources, of course, are not there. So, but then he tried to speak to him to say, "Look, we're trying. We'll try as a faculty to assist you. You need to to do this, and you can do it. So we need to try and maybe, uh, uh, in as much as our should is to teach and lecture them, but also to reach out to them, you know, from that perspective to say, let's meet you halfway, because some of them still have traumas from where they come from. You come from a situation where you have never seen what you're seeing now in Islam. And Prof just said now that this place is just a, a small place." But somebody will tell you that I grew up in one village somewhere here in the same camp, but I, I've never been to a city. That, that is so bad because the exposure now, especially now, is that you get it from spaces just in, in towns or in urban areas, unlike in the rural areas because the issue of internet and all this and that. But now, once you fail you know, to reach out to that student, eventually they, they will fall out of the way. And I think I also want to add the issue of you know, especially the boy child, because uh, let's try and educate the boy child as to how he should behave. Because university is not all about teaching them about the content of the law, etc. But it's about building an individual, a responsible citizen that is going to go and behave better and even transform the society, speak to others about how they should behave. Because when they go back to their villages, despite the challenges that are there, they are there as an inspiration, they are there to, you know, to change the environment. Even if they are, well, while they're still students, by the way, because you go back to them and say, look, Dad, this is not how we treat a woman. This is not how we treat a lady. This is not how we treat a child. Because the law says this. They've got something that they can take home even now. And I think that way we can even sometimes achieve some of the, you know, overcome some of the challenges, rather, that we are facing, such as, you know, violence against women, against children, etc. Because then they expose that knowledge. And they see how we treat each other even as colleagues. And they see what it address you cannot do certain things you know you cannot do this at campus you cannot do this that so that kind of environment sort of try to build a responsible individual that is going to be you know perhaps a better citizen tomorrow so i think those are some of the of the issues that we we, we have to try to to really involve in our in, in our in our teaching yeah i think um what is interesting for me what i just thought of now i lecture human rights mm -hmm. and yeah. most of our students when they come to university they will tell you that that is one of their main issues that they want to pursue. And almost all of them. And one can true. see where it comes from. It's yeah. because they have identified the challenges th that they have in their personal lives, their families. A lot of them speak about their mothers and how they've st struggled just to get through their um, schooling and so forth. So it's interesting for me when we then um, give them that background on human rights, how they change. Yeah. Um, good court competitions, and the yeah. students are quite eager to get involved in that. And it's one of the ways yeah. in which we see a, a, a sudden change in the students. Um, you obviously get to know the students quite well. Um, and I, th I think of some of the previous students that I've taken that came from extremely uh, rural areas, um, a lot of poverty, yeah. who ended up getting doctorates yeah. in Switzerland mm -hmm. after they just got that little bit of exposure, exposure yeah. to, to take them a bit further. Um, the challenge is that we are, we are so busy that sometimes it's so difficult to constantly be engaged with that. Yeah. And sometimes we get so busy that we, we tend to forget what our students are dealing with in that specific point. And also, we don't always have the tools of the ability to assist them because there's not always funds available for students. So yes, I think unfortunately um, our students do do struggle. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's I think what I my 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 experience so far. I should I share the same sentiment, especially with the mood with, with Prof. I mean, we meet some of them. You know, you 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 can literally tell they tell you after in fact that look, I come from a place where actually there's one text that passes a day and you can't believe that there's something like that happening in South Africa. I mean, it can't be in this day and age where they have to, like, you know, I've got two. One he just finished the LLM in, in Pretoria now and one is just finishing up yeah. in, you know, LLM in, uh, in shipping lawyer at UCT. They come from the same place. I got so 
close to them through the mood one of them is even and he would tell you that you know I, I never imagined myself living in Pretoria I, that is not it at all so maybe but look a good take from that is that it motivated him and of course through the exposure that we gave him and the opportunity that he came forward being a proactive student he is way is because he did not you know sort of uh, take his background to be at disadvantage he, he you know he tried to defy all odds to say i want to achieve better than what is happening so that when i go back to my peers they will see a difference between because he was saying that i'm the i'm the first guy to do my village i couldn't believe it i'm like no mm. it, it can't be said i'm telling the honest fact i am the first guy to do my village and when i go there i mean i definitely know that yeah. someone is going to be inspired but that also sometimes works to the detriment of the student it because does. they are the first graduate mm. in their village the whole village would have contributed to their studies to their studies and yeah. there's then an expectation on that student on it, to it to return <laughs> and it, it's a burden so you can see the, the it weighs heavily on them it because does. they have it that does. support it structure does. at home from people that really are struggling just to help them they then are, are have a duty to return to return you that know. favor so um yeah and i think that sometimes results in students placing so much pressure on themselves that we have seen a lot of students that have developed some uh, depression and other issues obviously we mm. try and intervene with yeah. that yeah. um uh, but that is a really challenging part and mm. sometimes we have even lost some students yeah um to to suicide um which which affects the whole community um and especially the last i think year and a half has been an extremely difficult time for especially our students especially for the boy child because most of them are boys and you know it, it then it needs us then to try and and and, and maybe establish what is the problem and probably is, is it that there's no support structure do we reach out to them but my take is that probably we need to deal with some of the toxic patriarchal you know customs that still you know sort of f- follow us even wherever we, we you know we are i mean especially here in africa we've got a lot of some of these customs that you know inform us to, for you to be a man you have to be this you have to be that way but adversity i was just saying to them now in this session that we had that you know you need to get to a space you know as a as a law student male or female you know or otherwise where in you treat yourself as a law student not because you are a woman or you are a man or you are this but as a law student when you need help you reach out you know so i think our students need to come to that realization that we need to reach out when we need help not to you know when we are overwhelmed with because sometimes i just go to class prof and colleague gives him work another lecturer another colleague does that it then becomes too much though we try always to manage the, the classes and time to, to try and accommodate their needs but sometimes it does become you know quite a bit because then the curriculum demands that then some of them get overwhelmed and then there's a, a, the issue of language as well you know some of them come from places where they you know english is ha- hardly used and yet we use it as a medium of instruction so now they are you know left behind because of that so hence i think we've got this in the curriculum for instance to try and cover some of the you know such needs to say look instead of four years we are going to spend five years so that at least we can try and see that we can mold you to be a better person after five years i think you will just try it uh, not only to meet the credits for the qualification but also at least to have sort of uh, managed to grasp the very basic uh, you know tenets of an of an llb graduate which i think is something that we we're really doing yeah what is interesting for me now that you say that is we we say that the students are initially motivated i think to come and study law because of their situation but what keeps them going lately what i've seen is that the students that have done well yeah. that came from the same situation as them have become like superstars superstars yeah they they know where they are what they are doing they follow them on all the social networks, social networks yeah. and i think that has has created quite a bit of talk mm-hmm. and we've gotten Sorry. Oh. I, I think my one as well. I need to switch it off. Yeah. So sorry about that. I, I think they are done. So maybe they are looking for us. Oh, is that what you think? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's actually um, what you call it, Asanga. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, do you want to finish off a little bit, and then? Yeah. Maybe we yeah. can yeah. just finish off. And then, then we. Would you mind starting again? The. <laughs> so sorry about that. Yeah. No, no, the no, issue no. of uh, the inspiration from. Yeah. Yeah, I think. The it's interesting what I've lately seen. Um, obviously, there's some interventions that came in, and there's some funds 
that came available to students. Yeah. Um, their initial, when they arrive, they have a lot of energy because they want to improve themselves. They receive the opportunity. They've seen the situation where they come from and they see this as a avenue to improve their um, own situation. But then they realize that there are students that are the same as them, that yeah. came from the same background the same as them, context, yeah. but those students are now working at the Constitutional Court, they are working at the top five law firms in South Africa, yeah, the they've World gone Bank, to Switzerland, you know. mm -hmm. and that keeps them going. And as, as I said, those students become like superstars. They, get, they, they follow them on all the social networks, and uh, we still have contact with those students, yeah. and those students tell us that they get contacted on a daily basis for advice and so forth. And all these students were at, had exactly the same circumstances, but they got that one chance to improve themselves. And I must say, I'm sometimes amazed by what they can do yeah. from when you meet them on the first on time the in first the first year. year to when you see them actually at the constitutional, the constitutional court. court. Yeah. yeah. And maybe just to add on that, to say some of them, by the way, are the Canon College alumni. And yes. we're really grateful to the support that we're giving them because Prof and I were talking the other day that I think we need to extend some of, we need to have someone in the faculty, a psychologist or someone at least once a week, just to sit with them, talk to them, you know. So some of the uh, of, of these initiatives, I think we need to, I mean, project that scope to the stakeholders, such as, you know, Kenan Collins, to say, how can we go beyond just the normal MEMPEP's financial support and see, you know, how our students really behave? Because I, I think what is lacking is enough support system that then eventually, you know, derail, derail some of them from their program. But, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think sometimes people don't, value uh, the support enough because students here in East London sometimes feel like they are not valued like students are in maybe in Cape Town and students yeah. in Joburg and when there's a, a donor that assists they they it, it, it means a lot for them because they they feel like they are seen that they are not at a university where they don't have those options mm -hmm. and that they can compete yeah with people that come from any university I mean, even the, the top university in South yeah. Africa yeah I agree.